Hello and welcome students. Today we will discuss about introduction of intermediary metabolism and the metabolic pathways. So let's come to the introduction first. Metabolism can be defined as the set of life-sustaining enzyme catalyzed chemical reactions within the cells of living organisms. These chemical reactions form an integrate network of pathways and cycles in which the flow of reaction products is determined by many regulatory mechanisms. Its main purpose is to convert food or fuel into energy to run cellular processes to synthesize building blocks of cell like protein, carbohydrate, lipid and nucleic acid etc. and elimination of the waste product from the body. They are often known as intermediary metabolism. Coming to the functions of metabolism. In all living cells, metabolism enables the cell to perform its vital functions. The four specific functions of metabolism are A. To obtain chemical energy from the degradation of energy-rich nutrients or by capturing the solar energy from sunlight. B. To convert nutrient molecules into precursors of cell macromolecules. C. To assemble these precursors into proteins, lipids, polysaccharides, nucleic acids and other cell components. And D. To form and degrade biomolecules required in specialized functions of cells. So let's see what are metabolic pathways. Metabolic pathways are the sequence and geometric reaction that produces specific products. Some metabolic pathways are linear and some are branched, yielding multiple useful end products from a single precursor or converting several starting materials into a single product. In general, catabolic pathways are convergent and anabolic pathways are divergent and some are cyclic. That is, one starting component of the pathway is regenerated in a series of reactions that converts another starting component into a product. Let's come to the characteristic of metabolic pathways. They are irreversible. Metabolic pathways are highly exergonic which gives the pathway a direction. Consequently, if two metabolites are interconvertible, the pathway from the first to the second must be different than the pathway of the second back to the first. This independent interconversion allows the two pathways to be independently regulated. Each one has a first committed step. Most of the reactions in a metabolic pathway are close to equilibrium, but every pathway has an irreversible, highly exergonic reaction that commits the intermediate it produces to continue down the pathway. They are regulated, that means the control of the metabolic flux of metabolites through a pathway is accomplished by regulating the red determining step of the pathway which often is the first committed step of the pathway. Regulation occurs in following different ways. Number one, availability of the substrate. The rate of reaction depends on substrate concentration. Number two, Allosteric regulation of enzymes by a metabolic intermediate or coenzyme. Number three, by extracellular signal such as growth factor and hormone. Number four, it is occur in specific cellular locations in eukaryotic cells. Let's come to the compartmentalization of metabolic pathways. Eukaryotes use organelles to compartmentalize metabolic pathways allowing different metabolic 
pathways to occur in specific locations. The mitochondria, citric acid cycle, oxidative phosphorylation, amino acid catabolism mainly occur. And in cytosol, glycolysis, pentose phosphate pathway, fatty acid biosynthesis, gluconeogenesis occur. And in nucleus, DNA replication, RNA transcription, RNA processing mainly occurs. And in lysosomes, enzymatic digestion of cellular components happen. And in Golgi apparatus, post-transitional modification of membrane and secretory proteins, formation of plasma membranes and excretory vesicles occurs. And in rough endoplasmic reticulum, the synthesis of membrane-bound and secretory proteins occur. And in smooth endoplasmic reticulum, lipid and steroid biosynthesis happens. And in peroxisomes, oxidative reactions involving amino acid oxidases and catalysts, glycosylate cycle reactions in plants happen. Next, coming to the types of metabolic pathway and in details. First, catabolic pathway. Catabolism is the degradative phase of metabolism in which organic molecules such as carbohydrates, fats, and proteins are converted into smaller end products such as lactic acid, carbon dioxide, etc. This pathway releases energy, some of which is conserved in the formation of ATP and reduced electron carriers like NADH, NADPH, and FADH2 and the rest is lost as heat. Some major catabolic pathways in our cells are glycolysis. It is the breaking down of glucose molecule occurring in all living organisms. Glycogenolysis. It is the degradation of glycogen. This is found only in animals. Fatty acid oxidation. It is degradation of fatty acid by sequential removal of two carbon fragments to form acetyl-CoA. Then, amino acid catabolism. It involves deamination of amino group and dispose of it in urea synthesis and degradation of nucleotides. It is the degradation of purine and pyrimidine into uric acid and urea. Coming to the anabolic pathways. Anabolism is the set of metabolic pathways that construct molecules from smaller units. It is an anthergonic process where all the reactions are powered by the hydrolysis of adenosine triphosphate ATP, often from catabolism reaction. Anabolic process tends towards building up organs and tissues. This process produces growth and differentiation of cells and increase in body size, a process that involves synthesis of complex molecules. The striking feature of anabolic pathways is that they begin with a few common metabolites as starting materials and diverge into a wide range of biomolecules. Some anabolic pathways are gluconeogenesis. It is the process of synthesis of glucose from non-carbohydrate precursors. It is universal pathway found in all animals, plants, fungi, and microorganisms. Next, glycogenesis. It is the synthesis of glycogen from glucose 6-phosphate found only in animal cells. Then gliogylate cycle. It is a cyclic pathway that converts 2-acetyl-CoA to one molecule of succinate. It occurs in bacteria and plant cells. Then biosynthesis of fatty acids. It involves stepwise addition of 2-carbon unit acetyl-CoA to synthesize triacylglycerol, in short TAZ. But plants and animals have the ability to synthesize TAZ. Amino acid anabolism. It is the formation of amino acids from nitrogen, carbon sources by certain reactions. Plants and microorganisms can synthesize all the 20 amino acids, whereas animals can only synthesize 12 non-essential amino acids. 
Next, nucleotide biosynthesis. It includes synthesis of purine and pyrimidine. And the third pathway is the amphibolic pathway. This term was proposed by B. Davis in 1961 to emphasize the dual metabolic role of such pathway. The term amphibolic is used to describe a biochemical pathway that involves both catabolism and anabolism. The citric acid cycle, the Krebs cycle, is a good example of amphibolic pathway. The first reaction of the cycle in which oxaloacetate condenses with acetate to form citrate, which is typically an anabolic reaction. And in the next few reactions, which are intramolecular rearrangement, produce acocytrate. The following two reactions are typically catabolic. Carbon dioxide is lost in its steep and succinate is produced. Next is the role of adenosine triphosphate in metabolism. Adenosine triphosphate ATP is an essential link between energy utilizing and energy producing functions of the body. For this ATP has been called the energy currency of the body and it can be gained and spent repeatedly. ATP is a labile chemical compound that is present in all cells. It has the chemical structure combination of adenine, ribose and 3-phosphate. Energy derived from the oxidation of carbohydrates, proteins and fats is used to convert adenosine diphosphate to ATP which is then consumed by the various reactions of the body that are necessary for following functions like active transport of molecules across cell membranes, various synthetic reactions that create hormone, cell membranes and many other essential molecules of the body and in conduction of nerve impulses and cell division and growth, many other physiologic functions that are necessary to maintain and propagation of life. Next is the regulation of metabolic pathways. The regulatory mechanism is very necessary. It maintains a balance between the various anabolic and catabolic pathways. It is accomplished by many control mechanisms. These mechanisms may act directly at a local or subcellular level or indirectly at an extracellular level. Metabolic pathways are regulated by number 1. Nutrient supply. The metabolic sequences tend to add up quantitatively to the supply of a nutrient. This usually entails an increase or decrease in the amount of one or more enzymes involved in the metabolic pathway. 2. Nutrient transport. The supply of nutrient or substrate into a cell can be regulated by controlling the transport of the nutrients across the cell membrane. For example, insulin regulates carbohydrate metabolism by facilitating the transport of glucose into the cells. Number three, enzyme amount. The quantity of enzyme available for a reaction may be controlled genetically by induction or repression or its ability to enter conversion into inactive forms or by elasteric effects or even by inhibitors and activators. Furthermore, the synthesis of many enzymes is either induced or repressed by certain specific hormones. For example, the adrenoglucocorticoid hormones are induced for the synthesis of gluconeogenic enzymes whereas insulin serves as a repressor for the formation of these same enzymes but and induce for the synthesis of the key glycolytic enzymes. Number four, hormonal control. The metabolic pathways are controlled by hormonal secretions in many ways. Conversion of an inactive form of enzyme to the active is one such mechanism. Other mechanisms are the regulation of transport through the cell membrane, the enzyme induction, and repression etc. 5. Cofactor availability. The enzyme catalyzed reactions 
requiring a cofactor like NAD, FAD, NADH, FADH2, coenzyme A are affected by the amount of the cofactor available. All living organisms need energy to grow and reproduce, to maintain their structures and respond to their environments. Metabolism is a set of life-sustaining chemical processes that enables organisms transform the chemical energy stored in molecules into energy that can be used for cellular process. The metabolic pathways do not occur in isolation. They are interrelated to one another. ATP and enzymes contribute a major role in carrying the metabolic process. The energy release from the catabolic pathway is utilized in the anabolic pathway.